What's happening? This is Avadon, and welcome to another episode of the Beats for Breakfast podcast. Today, I am joined by a very, very special guest. Today, we are joined by the composer of the new indie title, Earth Night, Mr. Paul Weinstein. How are you doing today, sir? Did I say your name right? Uh, I, I, I hope I didn't mis- 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 mispronounce that. Oh, Weinstein, you got it. Weinstein. Okay, I feel uh, like a champion. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man, it's great to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming on. And um, you also go by the name Chipper Crit or by your stage name, correct? That's right. Yeah, Chipper. Great, great, great. But um, I just want to go ahead and just jump right into this because the way I would just want to thank you again for reaching out to me on Twitter where um, with the copyright claims, because I know <laughs> CD Baby takes care of their customers. So that's why yeah. when I saw who it was, I wasn't offended. I was like. This man's making sure this OST does well, and I, I have no qualms against that. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, uh, you weren't the first person that said something about it. We were kind of like, oh no, like is this going to be a thing? Like I figured we would. We wanted to just like nip it in the bud before it became like a big thing where people were complaining. Uh, you know, obviously, the a- any possible money I might be making by like having the, the video, the the songs and videos and stuff, is like nothing compared to just getting the video out there of people playing the game and that exposure like i want people to see it (laughs) and and i guess hear the music in context of the game much more than i care about monetizing youtube with to whatever extent i don't even know what that would even would be so yeah whatever i can do to get it out there excited about that for sure well it the music by itself it sounded really really good um there were a few things with this soundtrack that really caught my attention. I'm going to get into that a little bit later, but I wanted to ask you first, um, sure. what was your experience, you know, working with this project? Um, you were the lead composer, correct? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. I pretty much did everything. There's one song. It's um, the, the original version of it. It's like it actually plays over the credits. So when you complete the game, you hear this crazy orchestral beautiful song that was actually composed by a Japanese composer named Yoshimi Kudo who works with Hitoshi Sakimoto who Hitoshi Sakimoto is definitely well known he did Final Fantasy Tactics and I think Final Fantasy 12 um, he played the what game at play? E- yeah right <laughs> he, he played the game at E3 a couple years ago he just like stopped by our booth and thought it was really cool and was kind of like we want to do something so um his studio worked with us. They wrote this really beautiful orchestral song, which is obviously really different from the rest of the soundtrack, which is all chip tune and, you know, rock kind of stuff. Um, and we loved it. So I actually arranged a Game Boy version of it that plays when you're in level four of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, my version of their song, but they wrote it. But everything else, um, yeah, I composed myself. Uh, nice. Thanks. I did all the sound effects too. Nice. So you used the sound, so you used the sound designer and delete wow yeah Yeah. you had a lot of work on your hands that's that's pretty solid um yeah it was a lot of fun it was definitely the biggest project like this i've done um we started working on earth night maybe like seven years ago something like that it it took a long time (laughs) um it was sort of a part-time thing for the first few years that the team we were just working on it whenever we could uh we all had other things going on and um a couple years ago our lead developer, his name is Rich Siegel. I'm probably going to refer to Rich a lot. He uh, he was able to sell his other company, which was completely unrelated to video games. He was doing like food delivery, kind of like Grubhub or like uh, Caviar or whatever. He sold it to Caviar, actually. And um, with basically with the money he made from that sell, sell, he went full-time on Earth Night. And so for the past two, I think, full years, we were able to really full-time dig in and get this done. Um, my part with the soundtrack and everything, Rich and I have been friends since before he was making video games and before I was really before I was even doing chiptune music, I was in like another band and I, Rich and I, we've always bonded over music. We've been really good friends. We were, we're really big fans of the band Fish with the PH. Um, we're huge Fish fans. We go to Fish shows together all the time mm-hmm. and, um, we just kind of bonded over that. He used to come and support my old band and everything. And at a certain point, it's actually, it's been like 10 years now that I've been doing this chiptune stuff. And 
uh, I was just kind of like, hey, like check this out. I'm making music with Game Boys. It's like this weird thing I discovered. I'm really into it. And Rich was one of my like really early supporters. He was just like, oh my god, I love this. This is really cool. Uh, pretty much since the beginning, he was like pushing me to do stuff with it and um, you know get myself out there and make music for all these weird online videos and commercials and stuff and uh, play live shows. And he, at one point, decided to start making games himself. Uh, the first few things we did together were kind of like... I don't even know how I would describe them. They're like these stupid little, almost like social app games. Yeah. The first thing we did was called Beard Wars, like beards. Um, it's kind of this silly little app that he made where you can take pictures of your beard and like challenge people with other beards oh, to like... Wow. A, a, a war, <laughs> a little beard that's, battle. That's interesting. It, it was cool, and it actually had a, like, a pretty decent little following of people, a couple tens of thousands of people or something, and uh, he later did the same thing with uh, Puppy Wars, okay. where people would take pictures of their pets, and people, you vote on your phone for which one you think is cooler or cuter or whatever, and then that's how you would win the, the little wars. I did a couple of songs for Beard Wars, um, and just other silly little things that we did, and at a certain point we were all kind of just like, let's see if we can make like a real game. Um, so a couple years ago, we came up with this idea for Earth Night. Uh, he was working, the, uh, the visual artist was a huge part of it at the beginning. The guy who did all the art for Earth Night, his name is Paul Davey. Um, his, like, handle is Matahan. Uh, Rich was just, like, a huge fan of Paul Davey's art and just, I think he just cold call emailed him one day and was like, do you want to work together? Like, I want to bring your art to life. Um, so they started coming up with this idea of making this game with dragons and blah, 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 and pretty much was like, we thought it was going to be like a six month project. <laughs> um, number game, game design number one rule that we, that everybody seems to know. And we now know is that nothing is going to take the time you think it's going to take. It's going to take like a million times longer every time. So we learned that the hard way. Um, but I mean, pretty much since the beginning, Rich was kind of like, I want you to be doing the music. It's a it's a thing about like when you get into chiptune music or whatever, like it lends itself to video games. You know, you're using video game hardware and people like the sound of it and stuff. And it kind of if you can write for a game, it just works really well for some of these sort of games that have like a retro kind of feel. Mm -hmm. So I think Rich always wanted me to be a big part of it, which is awesome. It means a lot to me that he believed in the sound for the game and yeah we just like over the years like i said it was kind of part-time for the first few years and i was just giving him songs here and there and as it started to pick up i uh, really started to pick up writing more songs and as the level art came in and i got to see more stuff it would inspire me to write more um and you know eventually i added guitar and my friend josh steingard plays drums on the whole soundtrack um so yeah, eventually we just kind of had enough songs to go with every level, and we pieced it all together. We had these, these little tracks for in between when you're doing the skydiving and stuff, and at a certain point it was just like, wow, the music. I, I, there was definitely a time seven years ago when I was just like, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to get this done. <laughs> like I, I, it I didn't seem, it didn't seem tangible. Like not just the game, but the music. Like, I, I never imagined I'd be able to, like, hold the CD in my hands, but now here we are, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, music. it was great. It, it, an amazing journey, seriously. Music takes time, you know. You gotta, one thing, you know, about music, you really have to take your time with it because if it's, especially when you're con con doing an album or an OST, you know, tr track listing, making sure everything flows together, making sure yeah. everything is mixed down properly, especially when you're doing um, chiptune music, since some of the sounds are strong on the high end, it's like you really got to mix things down, equalize it. It's It could be a tedious process. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So I get it. I yeah. I get I get the, the stress and I... Your hard work is appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> so I wanted to ask, though, what was your favorite track to, um, to compose on this original soundtrack? That that's a good question. Um, it's hard. It's a hard question. You know, it's like picking your favorite child. Yeah, <laughs> everybody always says that. But it's true. Um, I probably I would say the song that plays in the first level, uh, it's called Little Computer People. Mm -hmm. um, I actually didn't write it for the game. It was a song that I wrote, I just had like this idea for this song in my head like a long time ago, maybe like right after college or something. And um, eventually I like 
arranged a full version of it for Game Boy. Um, and at a certain point, I was like sending a really early version of it around to a couple friends, being like, check out this song I'm working on. I think it's got potential or whatever. And I sent it to Rich, and he really liked it. And he put it in like the earliest build of the game, just as like placeholder music. And I was like mad. I was like, what? Why would you do it? Oh my God. That's, <laughs> like, I'm, I was like a purist in a way of like, no, man, if it's going to be in the game, it's got to be something that I wrote for the game. Like, it's got to have that connection. It's got to have meaning. So, like, why are you putting this random song in? But, like, it worked. Like, it was really immediately obvious to everyone that it just was, like, perfect. And um, it became almost like a motivational thing. Like, it was like, yo, this game is, or the, the music is working. Like, we can't touch this. We can't change this now. And it just, it, I, I couldn't help it. I couldn't fight it. I was like, yeah, it's working. I, I guess you're right. Um, and enough other people kind of started giving me good feedback on it that I was like, all right. And also, it, it was like, I was hoping that, you know, there was a potential for this game to get the most exposure of anything I've done. Mm -hmm. And it was like, if, if a lot of people are going to be hearing this, I might as well have like one of my, maybe one of my best songs in it. So I'm happy to have that as part of the game. So it just kind of became this like motivational theme song almost for the whole game. And, um, yeah, I think it's probably my favorite. Okay, so Sad. it's funny you mentioned that one because that song by itself, when I heard heard it, it reminded me so much of the intro to Ninja Gaiden on the on the NES, nice. like the square sound. It reminds yeah. me of that first beginning, the first few seconds. I was like. <laughs> Dude, were you inspired by some of the old NES titles? And then it brings us to my next question. Like, what were some of your influences um, making this this entire soundtrack? Sure. Um, in terms of old Nintendo games, I mean, there's just, like, so many. I, I was always, like, a fan of, like, these... In terms of music, like, I remember, like, discovering at an early age, like, video game music that wasn't just in like playing in the background you know mm -hmm. like it was like creating another level to the game so like ninja gaiden was amazing by the way yeah um that soundtrack is awesome <laughs> um uh one of my favorite soundtracks as a kid was a game called maniac mansion sounds... which was like a yeah it's like a point and click adventure game kind of and um i always cite it as a big uh, influence because like you, you you choose it's like a and it's this crazy story it's kind of like a parody of like these old horror films and you're like in this mansion and you're this group of kids that are trying to save their friend mm -hmm. and you can choose different characters and all the characters um have like their own cd player that they're holding mm -hmm. with the, their own theme song that plays while you are like while that kid is your active character mm -hmm. and the song just like fit each character like perfectly and gave them like this level that wouldn't have been there otherwise so like there's this really nerdy character named bernard and his song is like nerdy sounding and computery and like maybe it sounds kind of like a devo song or something like that mm -hmm. um uh, there's like a surfer guy he's got like a surf rock song there's a punk there's a punk guy and a punk girl too and their songs are kind of like noisy like dur, 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 like punk mm -hmm. rock songs so it just like added this other level it becomes a character itself you know so I've always really liked video games like that. Another one I often talk about, there was a Nintendo game called Super Dodgeball. I don't even play that one. Everyone knows Super Dodgeball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, yeah. Um, Super Dodgeball, the soundtrack, you know, basically each level is almost interchangeable in terms of what happens, but like you travel the world and you play all these teams from all over the world, mm -hmm. and each new country there's like a song that plays it's almost like offensive <laughs> like it's almost like stereotypical of what that country would be like right on the line of like offensiveness but um it kind of it just gave the game so much character like the england song was like a mashup of like two beatles songs and like I the can, I can remember, remember that too. totally yeah and like the india song is like has like scales that you find in indian music and stuff i just thought that that was so cool like otherwise you're the game it just changes out some colors and some sprites and stuff but like by giving it music you kind of feel like you're traveling so like soundtracks like that i mean another similar example mario 3 super mario brothers 3 like everybody's iconic favorite everybody's favorite game for so many reasons but i don't think and everybody likes the music but like you know there was like those different worlds right so there was like the desert world 
and the big world and the sky world and stuff and like they all had different feels and the music is so important to that yeah so having you know in our game we have different dragons and different levels of the atmosphere and just like making these conscious decisions to give the music the same character that the art has or that the the world building has is just like that was hugely influential um yeah I think those are my biggest influences. In terms of like other music, non like video game stuff, like I, I mentioned Fish before, like I think Fish influences all of my songwriting. Um, I, I, wor- I try really hard to keep, you know, since you don't have like lyrics, people really like lyrics, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I've been working for my whole life. I'm not really much of a singer, so like with instrumental music, you gotta sort of work extra hard to keep it interesting because you don't have verses, you know, and you don't have. Um, even like a chorus, like a hook. So you've got to be like keeping people, you got to like distract them from that. So I, I listen to a lot of prog rock and a lot of like exciting instrumental music. So like Rush, Rush is one of my favorite bands. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, bands like that, some of those old prog rock bands. And uh, yeah, uh, some other, I got to give shout outs to like some other chiptune music that I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, Bit Shifter is like my favorite. He was the guy who got me started best chiptune musician of all time best chiptune songwriter of all time i think um he's pretty big uh for me big influence for me um my friend dino leonetti i play in a band with dino called cheap dinosaurs okay and um dino is really good at writing interesting uh like music that takes these twists and turns and stuff so big influence on me was dino and um everybody knows disaster piece right like modern indie composer disaster piece he did fez uh fez was pretty big influence i think and some of the more like atmospheric stuff mm-hmm. in earth night uh some of the, like when you're skydiving and stuff so disaster piece is a big influence too so yeah i think those are from all of the various areas of the music that i listen to i think those are some of the main best places that it came from okay well i could say like i i was able to hear you know a little bit of Ninja Gaiden. I can hear the Mario Brothers 3. Super Dodgeball, not so much because I only play that like once or twice in my life going over mm-hmm. a friend's house. Mm-hmm. So I don't really recall the Super Dodgeball soundtrack too much, but it's interesting. I would say it's definitely interesting and your other musical influences you know, definitely play a role. It's, it's, a, it's a great piece of work. I took some time to actually listen to the soundtrack. I was like, this is really good. Thank you. This yeah. is this is really good. But um, everyone, I want you guys to go ahead and take a look at the game Earth Night. If you have not purchased the game already, make sure you get it on PC, Switch, and Apple Arcade and Mac, correct? Yes. Yes. So make sure you guys go ahead and check out the game. We're going to go to our first commercial break, and we'll be back shortly.
Welcome back, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed the first scenes from Earth Night. Make sure you guys go purchase that on the platform of your choice. And I have to bring it back to um, Chippocrit here because he's he has done some amazing work with Earth Night. And I'm just curious because he, since he was the you you said you was the lead um, composer, you did everything yourself. I've heard multiple instruments in these songs. So mm. what instruments did you grow up um, playing? What instruments did you learn how to play in the course of your life? Sure, so I started on guitar okay. when I was maybe like 12, 12 years old. I mean, growing up I was listening to music all the time. I always could, I always had like musical ideas. I was always like humming, uh, always just like singing little things. Like not, not singing, too much because I'm always I'm kind of a shy vocalist but mm -hmm. I always had like musical ideas in my head my parents were always like is that something you heard somewhere or is that something you're making up <laughs> um, but I didn't really have any way to get the ideas out until I started playing guitar like I said when I was about 12 uh, I took lessons on that for a long time and just like really really connected with it really loved it immediately um, and started playing with some of my friends in various bands and kind of like jamming. We've always, my friends and I have always had like a big um, improv background. I've always been into sort of like, whether it's like jazz or just like mm. jam bands type stuff. Um, so I played guitar doing that for a while. Uh, maybe after three or four years, I started playing electric bass. Mm -hmm. And uh, almost out of necessity at first, like nobody wants to play bass <laughs> when you're, 14 or whatever it was um you but, don't understand you don't get a love for that until you get older yeah totally yeah it's one of those things that yeah i mean and and as soon as i started doing it i was like this is the best like i can't believe nobody wants to do this it's like mm -hmm. it's like a secret weapon you know <laughs> it's, yeah. it's in the back there and you get to do if you're if you know how to do it tastefully you get to like be interesting the whole time like you get exactly to play solos you know um so i loved it as soon as i started playing bass I just really connected with it even more than guitar like people a lot of people kind of said it like matched my personality and that's kind of an esoteric kind of thing to nail down but i i sort of feel that <laughs> and um yeah so so guitar and bass um i didn't I, you know i was into a lot of electronic music and i messed with like some kind of rudimentary drum machines and synth type software mm -hmm. but i didn't really get into sequencing electronic music until i started doing the game boy stuff actually um which was like i said about 10 years ago and like learning how to use the software that i use on the game boy it's called little sound dj mm -hmm. or lsdj and it gives you just like full control over the little sound chip that's in the game boy and um as soon as i started learning how that worked and everything i basically kind of reverse got into other synthesizers and little sequencers and stuff because it taught me a lot about how that kind of stuff worked mm -hmm. so after i started getting the game boy i started messing with like little like korg makes a lot of really cool little synths that i really like there's a thing called mono tribe that i really enjoy and, and some of their um nano or uh volca the korg volca series is awesome those little synths um i started well i've always like had a good ear so i could always tinker with a lot of things mm -hmm. um I mess around on drums a little bit. If I owned a drum set, I'd probably be better at it. There are there are drums on the album, but my friend Josh Steingard plays drums. Got it. But okay. I didn't do that. I didn't play that myself, but he. I pretty much. I'm kind of like a dictator. I'm kind of like, you got to play it this way. <laughs> but, <laughs> although although he actually, he's great. He's super professional. He plays in like a million bands in the area, and um, he does bring his own thing to it. He was actually playing uh, in a police. The police. Uh, cover band mm -hmm. right before he started working with me and then like police is actually one of my favorite bands So he brought some of that Stuart Copeland stuff in there, and I loved it I didn't even actually have to tell him to do that, and it was perfect um, But I would love to play more drums myself uh, and also in recent years I've uh, Started to mess around on piano a lot more um, I would love to, to have more formal piano lessons. I like got myself a pretty low-end but playable like digital piano just to have set up in the living room that I can just sit down at never had that in my life so like it's nice to have that now and I would love to get better at that I think that piano is I get why people are always like you should start on piano you can do so much with it I get why it's a good compositional tool and I wish I had started on it earlier so someday maybe I'll be better 
I wish I took piano seriously growing up myself because um, that was the first instrument that I learned how to play, but I didn't stick with anything until I got to electronic music myself. So I bounced around from piano to flute to alto saxophone, dabbled on drums a little bit. Then I went into electronic music for the past 15 years. So I get it. And I just got a piano myself and I'm just like relearning myself just the basics with piano. And it's so relaxing when yeah. you get a chance. Yeah, relaxing is a good word for it, for sure. And it, and it feels good. You it know? does. Like when you when you nail something, you're like, oh, oh man, yeah. <laughs> piano, it's it's because it's so there's so much you can do. It's such a you can do like you know the work of like three other separate instruments almost at once you got bass you got chords you got melody uh and it's yeah you want you keep wishing you're better at it <laughs> you know you do <laughs> and it just has such a pristine sound to it where you really master the piano it is yeah it is so comfortable to you so i keep right when you get a chance just keep keep dabbling yeah, definitely. I plan to. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But um, I want to um, ask you again with just some more influences because you grew up playing a lot of instruments. But um, and this soundtrack, I could definitely hear the guitar. I could definitely hear the synthesizers. But I was just curious, were there any other recent gaming soundtracks that have been influences towards you in the creation of, of this album in this seven year process? Sure. Um. Yeah, so I mentioned Disaster Piece before. Yes. Uh, Disaster Piece is probably the, maybe, I mean, he influences, like, everybody. He's one of those guys who almost, like, created a new genre. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that sort of ambient uh, sounds really analog. Probably, probably a lot of it is analog, like, those synths, those, like, kind of detuned ambient synths and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think I have a little bit of that in there with the skydiving songs. Um and like the ambient song that. that sort of the plays in the lobby like i would love to do more stuff like that actually i'm hoping to do more that's part of the learning better being better at piano thing is doing more synthy stuff like that um i my favorite game of all time is spelunky uh i'm, I'm a big indie game guy in general like i like indie games a lot more than a lot of like triple a games i like indie games too yeah a lot. yeah I, it's just like I gravitate more towards some of these really creative like what we did, you know, mm -hmm. and um, Spelunky is just like amazing. The game is incredible and the composer to that game, his name is Eric I'm not really sure how to say his last name, Serki or something. Mm -hmm. He performs under the name Flagistan, I think. He's a huge influence like uh, everything I've heard him do. He also did that game Downwell, which I'm also Oh, with. that game? Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I love Downwell, both the game and the music. So, like, I love just, like, these little creative... He's another guy, like, I was mentioning my friend Dino. Um, Flagistan, er Eric's a similar thing where he... It's a short song. It's maybe, like, 45 seconds, but there's so much going on in there, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, definitely influenced by that. Um, I love the soundtrack to Hotline Miami. Like, I love that synth wave... Um, that 80s kind of feel again that's another thing that i would i'm gonna hopefully do more of i think that lobby song the song in earth night when you're like doing your character mm -hmm. select and stuff um i tried to there's like a synth kind of like a that's the synthiest song on the album i want to do more stuff like I that like for it. sure i like it a lot Thanks. i also like the the bass line that comes somewhat in with that is it's like the synth, but it's like a synth bass that overlays the actual melody um, mm -hmm. in, in the lobby. And it's just so peaceful. It gives me, um, believe it or not, it gives me 16-bit era Sega vibes, more so with Sonic 2. Yeah. Uh, where you're um, on the plane with Tails flying, flying to, mm -hmm. the, um, to the boss. It gives me that type of feel. It yeah. gives me the... Um, we beat the game with Ryu and Street Fighter. It gives me that type of feel, or even mm -hmm. Streets of Rage, the good ending. It gives me those types of feels. So it is really peaceful. It's something that you could literally have on loop for a really long time. So again, it's phenomenal job with this. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, so. That's the Genesis. The sound chip in the Genesis is more like an FM kind of sound. Yes. And um, I got. I have a Korg Volca FM 
so I'm trying to dig more into that kind of sound too and learn more about that. I think the Genesis, I never, I, I actually kind of skipped that generation. My parents would sort of never let me get, <laughs> we had an NES and then I never got a Super Nintendo or a Genesis, um, but I would play it at friends' houses, obviously. And as much as I love a lot of Super Nintendo games and I do appreciate a lot of Super Nintendo music, I think the Genesis sound chip was better. Yeah. And I think the Genesis soundtracks are a little bit more interesting. So I, I would definitely hope to be able to emulate that kind of sound someday for sure. I 100% agree with that because um, games like uh, Maximum Carnage, games like Separation Anxiety, or even games like the Mortal Kombat games, like those mm. games, even Earthworm Jim, those mm. games sounded oh, yeah. better on, on Genesis. Um, yeah. Even if you want to go the 8-bit and 16-bit um, turnaround, there's a game, an indie game that I love a lot, The Messenger, that does a oh, fantastic yeah. job with um, changing that around. Even, um, yep. well, it's not Monster Boy. I love Monster Boy. Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy does a great job in that, too, actually. Another indie title. Nice. So, I haven't played Wonder Boy. I have played The Messenger a little bit, and I know um, the guy who did the soundtrack for The Messenger, uh, Rainbow Dragon Eyes. Yes. Um amazing did an amazing job it's like everybody loves it and it's it really is so good and it's so cool how it switches between the 8 and 16 bit like i've i've seen that idea done a couple times and they i think they really nailed it in that game and uh yeah oh my god great amazing soundtrack that's a good one yeah i would suggest for you to try wonder boy because wonder boy at a touch of a button you can switch between 8 and 16 bit okay yeah so it's it's I feel really like maybe, cool Maybe if I look at it, I'll remember it. It's like yeah. not ringing a bell right now, but I'll definitely check that out, Wonder Boy. Definitely, definitely, definitely. But um, before we get into the last portion of this interview, I want to give you guys a quick commercial break. I want you guys to actually uh, take more time to look at more of this game and just more of this creative work by Chipper Crit. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed that break. Now, Mr. Weinstein, I really have to ask you some of your advice on this. And it's not only just for myself, but, you know, people that are watching this, people who, you know, they do music, right? But they want to aspire to play their music in video games. That's something that my parents always told me. It's like, you sound like a video game that you're making music for. And... <laughs> Growing up, sometimes right. if you have other aspirations, that's not what you want to hear. But I can see the value in that. So I wanted just your taking your advice since you had firsthand experience. What is your advice for up and coming musicians to get their music in video games? Sure. Um, yeah, it's it's hard because a lot of it honestly is like straight up luck <laughs> uh you can you can put yourself in but make 
get yourself into the best possible position to have good luck. And that obviously sounds sort of hard to nail down, but like there are ways to do it. Um, I always tell people to like always put your best foot forward. That's something that people take for granted sometimes. Like, mm-hmm. and, and take yourself seriously. Like, you know, I'm making music with a Game Boy. Like, it's it could have, and I did start kind of just for fun just like to see where it would take me and stuff but as soon as people like my friend rich and like other people were like wow that's like really good you're actually you sound really good on that and like you know i want that in my game and stuff take it seriously because it's um because if people like it and if and if there's an audience for it like you know put it out there in a in a good way i i see a lot of people put it posting just kind of like works in progress and stuff and like there's value to that for sure but like while you're building up portfolio and stuff like you really should put your best stuff out there and, and showcase that because like if there, if you have a million things on your SoundCloud and like a lot of them are 30 seconds and they're just like snippets and stuff like that's just a lot of stuff for people to sift through to find the stuff that they're really impressed with. Absolutely. So, um, you know, somebody I once saw like on a message board, somebody said, I think maybe it was a post about like, how do I know when a song is done or something? And like, that's actually, that shouldn't be like a, of challenge that should be like a positive thing like you can control your own song so like you get to say when it's done don't why would you ever why would you you know post it before that you know like why would you say you you get to say like this is ready and when you think it's ready and like when you feel in your heart that it's ready and stuff that's probably when it is so like post it at that time (laughs) um and i think that all contributes to creating like a professional um portfolio and a, and a thing that people will see and just be impressed with because like, like that's really what it's all about just getting someone to listen and be like wow i want this in my game like this is exactly what i need um so that's that's for like the getting started getting booked part i guess uh mm-hmm. in terms of like i also I, I like i've learned a lot in terms of like the part where you're actually doing the work and i and like some some of the best things i've learned in that is like like we were kind of talking, I think it might have been before we started recording, it's, or maybe when we took the break, it's really not just about writing a song. It's, mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's an important big part of it, but like, there's always going to be something where they're going to be like, hey, can you like edit this down? Like, we need you to chop this. We need 30 seconds off of this for whatever reason. Like, we need this special file format. And we need, we need it to sound more like this. So like, along with songwriting and stuff like learn software learn a DAW, learn i learned pro tools just because i was like this seems like a good thing to know and i it was a great thing to know um whatever it is pro tools logic cubase uh ableton anything like because because somebody's gonna say like i need this thing i need i thank you for writing the song it's great but i need something specific from you and if you can just go into pro tools and make a few changes and give it right back to them like that's that makes you more valuable so there's always value for that um there's also value so we built our game in unity that was the game engine we used uh and i'm not a unity expert at all but i have worked in it and i do get it now and uh and i was like you know working with the team um as much as i could you know with the programmer and stuff like along the way just to try and kind of like have in my head the way that the game was working and the systems and stuff and that you know the way that everything is working nowadays in unity the way like the freedom and the the way that technology has advanced like there's so many opportunities to do creative things with music like it's not just in the background you know there's so much more you can do you can like have things like sync up with the tempo for example yeah or have uh sound effects that are in the same key yeah. as the tempo and like there's all these creative logistical decisions that you can help with the team and if you come to them with those ideas they'll definitely like love you <laughs> they'll think that that's so cool they'll think that you're contributing just you know you didn't just send them a song and then like peace out you know um so just uh anything you could do to to be more than just a musician like it's really valuable and i i, I learned that <laughs> i really liked learning that too it was cool it's basically what you're saying is transition from the role of being just a musician to being an actual producer or composer of the actual track where kind of like what you said with the um with the drums directing 
you're able to mm-hmm. direct you're able to say what's needed um being able to play you know some of the sample sounds in the same key or the same tempo it's that does wonders it's because a lot of people they don't really know how to do that so mm-hmm. you coming to you know different companies as you said you're extremely valuable yeah. um i wanted to really touch on what you said about also the fi- unfinished product um mentality i feel a lot of people get too excited that they made something they have to share it with everybody i've been through that in in, a, mm-hmm. in my stage of, mu- of music because you you get so excited that you got your partial idea out there but you're right it's so much better for you to put your best foot forward finish it put it out there but in all but if you do have that mentality one thing that i learned what you can do you could record that moment of when you actually made it when you finally made that unfinished record that moment don't put Mm -hmm. it out yet but put it out when the finished product is out so it's almost like on instagram and say yeah this beat is almost finished and then go over to my soundcloud for the finished product type of thing it it creates yeah. more of an interest and more value because they it's like people feel like they were a part of the work yeah yeah that's definitely true i love that kind of stuff like if you know an album that i've been listening to for my whole life they do like a, a 20 year anniversary edition and yeah. they have the demos and stuff i love it absolutely love that but that's like you know that's for people who've sort of gotten past the point of like putting themselves out there and just like i said there's just like so much content to sift through you know like you if you if i were to go on twitter right now and say like i'm working on a new game that's this i'm looking for a composer i would get like 30 you know responses in five minutes because just like everybody wants to be a part of these things and uh, the only you know if there's if i go to your soundcloud and there's a million things and i don't know what's your thing that you want me to listen to it's just it makes it a little bit harder but i do agree with you that there is value in it and i understand why people do it i think people might want it, to it is exciting you might want to limit it you send it to some of your friends <laughs> you know maybe don't post it and get some feedback from people that you know Absolutely. instead of like you know soundcloud fan 79342 or whatever <laughs> not that he's not valuable but um, it's just, it's like, there's just so much content out there. And uh, if your portfolio, anything you put out there could be your portfolio, you know? Mm-hmm. And you do want it to be, so I think you want it to be kind of narrow. But I, there's there's different approaches. I've seen a lot of people do different things. I see people who like, like uh, you mentioned, you put out four albums in a year. I mean, that to me is amazing, like in a really good way. Like, I, I think uh, some people can put out amazing content. One of my favorite bands is a band called Guided by Voices. Mm-hmm. They're like this lo-fi indie rock band that, like, they do. They put out several albums, sometimes in a year, and each album has, like, 30 tracks on it. <laughs> and their their lead singer has, like, thousands of songs registered with, his, with ASCAP or whatever, something crazy like that. So there is something to be said for, like, con- uh, quantity, I guess. But uh, but again, I think it's kind of like once you get past the point of like, who is this person? You know, exactly. <laughs> maybe you can maybe you can then unload all your creative stuff and have people to just eat it up, which is awesome. And you're right because to what you said, I also want to touch on that where you're right. You should be known for one thing or one style because if you have multiple styles, as you said, if you're someone who's looking for looking for a talent you're not going to know what to choose because they're sampling everything. They are jack of all trades, master of none. But if someone can master a special sound that you're looking for, it's a lot easier to find. So I think that can be true. Yeah. A hundred percent. I definitely understand. But, um, I wanted to just ask you one, one last and main question. This is something that I feel we could all take away from. Now, we both discussed the challenges of just music creation and just marketing in general. What was your greatest challenge mm-hmm. in this project for Earth Night and how did you overcome it? Mm. Uh, to some extent, like getting started mm-hmm. was really hard. Uh, I got really lucky in that story I told earlier where Rich just wanted to use a pre existing song in the game and that sort of um, kicked us off. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
like I said, like I had never, I have done, I had done some soundtrack work before, really small soundtrack work, um, and uh, like I did actually a whole soundtrack for like a small game dev group based in South Jersey, mm. and I wrote a whole bunch of songs for their game, and it actually never got released. Um, but their game was actually even more. It was it was supposed to be like an eight bit or a sixteen bit platformer, so the chip tune music was like a perfect fit for it. But when this game was started, I mean the art is like such high quality, and I know that chip tune isn't for everybody. So my probably the biggest challenge at the beginning, aside from even just getting started, was like worrying. I was worried from day one that people were not going to like the chip tune concept. Like I was just like. I don't know, like, I don't think that, you know, and there might have been something early that we posted really, really early on that maybe our first trailer or something and people were like, I don't know, too bad about the music or whatever. And first of all, never read the comments. <laughs> never read the YouTube comments. It's a minefield. But, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously I do read the comments, but try not, if you go, if you are going to read them, try not to take them too much to heart. But, but I'm like, early on, I'm just like, I don't know, like, the, the, the art is so high quality and there's just like so much hi-fi stuff in this game. I don't know if people are going to get this lo-fi thing. Um, and Rich, you know, to his credit was like, no man, it's perfect. Like, keep it, keep at it. Like you'll see. And I think that there were a couple things that helped me get past it. Um, one was like when I started adding the guitar and, and the drums and other synths and stuff, it started to sound a little bit more modern mm -hmm. and it started to sound a little bit more like really what we were going for, which is, a modern take on a classic you know arcade platform kind of thing so after a little while in spite of the fact that i was really worried about it at first it made logical sense like yeah a new twist on something old which is really the heart of the game so so that made me feel a lot better uh the live instruments um uh and just kind of like seeing people's feedback like not on youtube <laughs> yeah when we we took the game to a lot of um conventions and stuff so we were at pax a couple times and we were at playstation expo and e3 nice. yeah and and i would go to a lot of these events and see people playing it and get a lot of positive feedback on the music so finally i was like okay maybe this is working maybe i am doing the right thing it feels a lot better and um at a certain point, I just stopped worrying about it, and nice. it, and uh, the whole soundtrack just came together. And I, I wasn't, it wasn't like I, I guess you know, even until the last minute, I was sort of worried. Like I don't know, but like it wasn't. It was a different kind of worry. It was the kind of worry that it's like maybe uh, anything could be trashed. You know, like anything, right. put anything out, somebody is just going to be like, I hate this. I don't know what they were thinking. But it wasn't really for the specific thing that I was worried about at the beginning anymore. It was just like a fear of the whole thing being terrible. Oh, here comes my cat. Hey, Zoe. Say hey! <laughs> we have a cameo! <laughs> cat cameo. I'll put her down. <laughs> um, but yeah, th that challenge of not knowing if it was the, the right thing at first... Um, I'm glad I got over it because it could have, like, you know, you can, like, freeze up. I, I never, there were moments when I was kind of like waiting for maybe some new art assets or whatever, but I, the creative, the songwriting was pretty solid throughout the whole thing, which makes me feel very good <laughs> and confident that I could keep doing it, I think. Nice. nice. I have to definitely say, um, it's, it's a lot because you wasn't just creating a, an original soundtrack. We were just creating an original soundtrack. It would have been probably a lot less tedious but it's like when you're creating a soundtrack to actual something that like you're creating you're making sure like everything matches with the level or the themes of the level so it's in a way it's the early stages of movie scoring yeah a and absolutely yeah a lot of people don't take it as that but it, it's exactly that so for the fact the fact that you had that opportunity to actually you know show off you know your style and your and your talents with this it's an amazing feat and if no one told you yet congratulations <laughs> thank you thank you so much uh i appreciate it I, re I really do all the feedback has been pretty positive um and 
we it really means a lot because <laughs> like i said for a while we were kind of like i don't know i don't know what's going to happen with this i mean seven years is just like so long to put into anything um so and we at a certain point just for we wanted to get it done <laughs> not not in like a bad not in like a just rushing to get it, but like in a anticipation oh, man, we gotta do this yeah exactly yeah and yeah. And every time anybody else would be like, when's it going to be done? When's it going to be done? We'd be like, nobody wants it to be done more than us. <laughs> Believe me. So um, it's great to be great that it's out. And, and the feedback really means a lot to us. And thank you so much. Really. You are most welcome. Please, everyone watching, make sure you either support this game or support the original soundtrack or you can do both. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you can do both if you like that the game awesome. with the soundtrack you know you can do both but um i definitely at a, cer at a certain point we're probably gonna have a package on steam where you get the game and the soundtrack oh um, yeah we haven't i don't know why we haven't done that yet i'm gonna get on that <laughs> you guys got you guys got a sneak, sneak peek to what's happening but um yeah um i will definitely be getting a physical copy of that album because i'm that's something that I actually do want to have a physical copy of. So awesome. I'll go on CD Baby shortly and make sure that is done. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast and taking time out of your schedule to have this interview under short yep. notice once again. Of course. Thank um, you for having me. Definitely. And um, if you have any other projects, anything you want to speak on, if you just want to chop it up and talk music, let me know. We could definitely do another episode because totally, yeah, definitely. It was definitely a pleasure um, having this recording with you. Um, My pleasure. Thank you. Do you have any uh, last words you want to give the audience? Uh, not really. Just go kill some dragons. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Well, we're gonna close out. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the Beast of Breakfast podcast. Uh, we're gonna close out how we always close out. So if you like this video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and most of all, most of all, you make sure you share this with a friend. This is Avadod and Chipocrit, and we are out. Peace.